What if I told you that the normal testosterone levels you've been hearing about might not actually be normal for you? Hi, I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Today, we're breaking down the science behind testosterone levels, what's considered normal, why it varies, and how it impacts everything from bone health to fertility. If you've ever wondered whether your testosterone levels are where they should be, keep watching. I've had patients come into my office confused, frustrated, and honestly, a little angry. They get their blood work back, see they're at 310 nanograms per deciliter and their doctor says you're fine but they don't feel fine and there's a reason for that the current guidelines we use well, they're a little bit oversimplified. Let's start with the basics. Guidelines like the American Urological Association recommend 300 nanograms per deciliter as the lower limit of normal, while European guidelines suggest 350 nanograms per deciliter. But here's the thing, this one-size-fits-all approach doesn't account for the fact that different organs in your body need different levels of testosterone to function properly. For example, in the Testosterone for Diabetes mellitus trial, which was probably in the Lancet, participants were enrolled to receive testosterone replacement when they had a total testosterone of less than 404 nanograms per deciliter. And they found that those who got testosterone had a significant reduction in their risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Here's where it gets even more interesting. They looked at that same group of patients and they found that testosterone treatment improved bone density and structure, suggesting that bone health might need higher levels than, let's say, sexual desire. However, the science is still not clear if testosterone therapy leads to less frequent fractures. Now, when it comes to fertility, reproductive specialists aim for testosterone levels between 600 and 800 nanograms per deciliter, which is much higher than the so-called normal range. Another thing to consider is how quickly testosterone makes a difference in your body. For example, if you want improvements in sexual desire or mood, you may see differences within weeks of starting treatment. But changes in muscle mass and bone density, those can take much longer, requiring higher and more sustained levels of testosterone. And speaking of improving sexual desire, I have a free gift for you guys. If you want to get my top 10 evidence-based tips for enhancing pleasure, check it out at www.renamalikmd.com slash more pleasure. Finally, let's talk about age. Is 300 nanograms per deciliter cut off appropriate for a 25 year old probably not younger men may need higher thresholds to maintain optimal health and researchers are now suggesting age-specific ranges to better tailor treatment and i've made a prior video looking at these age-specific ranges in the past so check it out to learn a little bit more lastly your sleep quality which i've talked about before has a huge impact on your testosterone levels even if you're technically normal improving your sleep can lead to significant increases in testosterone. Your body produces most of the testosterone during deep sleep following your normal natural circadian rhythm. So if you're not sleeping well, you're fighting an uphill battle. No amount of treatment is gonna fully compensate for poor sleep. So what's the takeaway here? Your normal testosterone level shouldn't be defined by a single blood test number. Instead, it should be based on your individual needs, whether that's bone health, fertility, or overall well-being. Now, very quickly, I want to clarify, if you are looking for fertility, do not take testosterone replacement. It will actually dampen your fertility, but we do have off-label ways to improve fertility. I've talked about that before on my channel as well. Also, I want to be clear that testosterone is not a panacea of all issues in your body. It will help you if you are low for your individual needs. However, if you have normal testosterone and you take more testosterone, it is not going to improve your bone health, your fertility especially, and it's not going to improve your mood or your sex drive. But I still firmly believe that personalized treatment is the future and understanding your unique testosterone requirements can help us prevent more long-term issues like muscle loss, bone density problems, and your risk for future health issues. If this video opened your eyes to how testosterone really works in your body, subscribe because you can find me here every week diving deep into men's health topics that most doctors won't discuss. And hey, share this video with someone who might benefit from understanding their testosterone levels better. And as always, I'm gonna take care of yourself because you're worth it.